Hello and welcome to Budget Foodie UK. As per, I am Roshenda Smith and I'm joined today by a very special guest indeed. Another Budget Foodie in the world of YouTube. This is Claire from Mum Things. Hello, Claire. Hello, Roshenda. It's so lovely to be on. I'm sorry the technology didn't work, but we're here anyway. So this is lovely. I feel like we're having a good old chin wag, like you could almost be in my kitchen. Absolutely. You don't want to be in my office, though. It is a disaster zone. So this is the best bit. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about you. Where are you in the country and what do you do? Well, I am in the northwest, so I'm in Lancashire. And uh, what do I do? I was an HR manager, but I've left that career. And now I'm a, a professional chaos goblin. <laughs> and so I've got two very, very young children that I'm at home with and I do some freelance work in politics. But I won't talk about politics because that's not what we're about. We're here for the budget food. And you do have a tortoise, I believe. And you obviously are a mark. Oh, sorry. I do. Um, I've got a tortoise, three snakes, two cats, a rabbit and a bearded dragon and an Ed. Wow. And an Ed. I've seen yeah. Ed in your video. Yeah, he thinks he's the star now. Yes, I've noticed. You're like, just go, go. Uh, so you you have a busy household. Have you always been frugal? I have. So I grew up in a big family. Um, there were six of us, so two brothers and a sister. And um, my mum came from a background where it, she was very working class there wasn't always a lot of budget so she was always brought up to be really frugal and when I'm talking frugal I mean they like bred rabbits out the back garden of the terraced house for me that kind of frugal obviously this was a few years ago that's not really common practice now they had a goat as well oh. so it, it was that Thank standard you. and she she carried that through my whole childhood and I've done the same really not breeding rabbits. I don't do that. That's not a thing. God, so I, I'm quite new to the frugal world. So I have been traditionally terrible with money. And I believe it may be to do with not being taught how to manage money. And that only now at 41, working it out. Um, and that's really my education has been self-education through YouTube. So obviously, it's not something we're taught at school. My mum, she never had a lot of money. She was a care assistant. She used to work nights when I was growing up. So I was like a latchkey kid, just letting myself in and out, surviving on pot noodles at the time. But as I've got older, I've really learned a lot about food and what, what I should be eating and what I shouldn't be eating. And then I've realised, getting to the ripe old age of 40, that I haven't got anything to my name. I haven't got a house that I own. I just rent. Like, I've just set up a business, but I don't have any savings investments I don't have that stability and, and in my head that's the most important thing I feel like I'm probably never going to find a man that is fine um, I'm quite happy with Jack my cat but I just feel like I need to be able to know in my mind that I'm going to be okay when I retire yeah yeah that it's it's a tricky one isn't it because um, we're sort of similar ages I'm a couple of years uh, younger but not far off and I, I feel very much like your situation is not uncommon amongst our peers, though. None of us were taught this stuff. Like until a couple of years ago, if you said to me, oh, you know, the what is it? Amortization rate of your mortgage. I would have been like, what? What? Who? What? What is this? Because we just weren't taught it. I know very much that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. But I know diddly squat about interest rates. <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? So I. So what I. You go first. I've got another question, but I'll, I've got loads of questions. I've actually written them down. Well, a, a question I had for you is obviously you've got the wonderful Jack, who I adore. He's such a sweet star. So what challenges do you face, though, as a, a single person having that scenario? Because the, the thing that springs to mind for me is I'm used to doing batch cooking, cooking, buying in bulk, cooking in bulk, doing all of that and storing in bulk as well. Is that trickier? 
it's a different ball game. So when I first started doing this, I tried that. So I, I tried a, a horrendous experience I had with muscle food um, by getting a load in. And then I also just tried going to the supermarket and buying things to bulk cook and then bulk freeze. But the problem with that being a single person is that very quickly you get sick of eating the same thing. And because I'm only a single person, my freezer compartment's tiny. I've got luckily bigger than an ice box but I've got a tiny little three compartment freezer so I, if I was to fill it with the same thing I, I, I'd just be I think pulling my hair out so I've had to think a bit more strategically about it and actually I find doing the weekly shop for me is key can't even really get away with doing a monthly shop it has to be a weekly shop um, and at the moment setting myself at a budget of 50 pounds a week on food which I think is actually amazing because some weeks when I first started I was doing 10 pounds or 15 pounds and one week I did no spend so I just lived on what I had in in the cupboard but for you how do you go wow. about when you're bulk buying how do you go about getting the best deals um so two things that I do is you've got to adjust whatever plan you've got in your head to whatever's on offer or the yellow stickers or whatever so um I will I'm not a fussy person I will cook whatever there is I've got a whole load of lamb's heart in my freezer at the moment not something most people would buy or everyone would buy but I will make it work right you just work with what's on offer but you can also find places like Rogers Wholesale Food they do stuff that's massively discounted because it's perhaps past the best before things like that you've just got to find these things but then also balance the cost with driving out your way to go and get it um so yeah just being flexible about what's in season what's available really rather than um specifically going out with a plan in mind that you won't deviate from what that is helps. Your and average, the other thing is making sure you what's your average spend would you say i would say per week bearing in mind i've got to feed all the animals and uh, the kids as well and it's the kids that are the expensive bit because snacks are not cheap and um, i would say probably about 70 pounds a week that's really good yeah um, it, it can be more it can be less um maybe pushing it to 80 pounds once you sort of add in the extra milk and things like that but yeah it's I have to keep a tight rein so Claire how do you budget overall do you have a spreadsheet and then do you have a, a monthly amount for food and fuel or do you have a do you separate out like personal items like deodorant tampons all that stuff or does it all come out of the food budget okay well I'll confess my sins in a moment because I know you're really good at that stuff. Um, first thing is I don't buy things like um, feminine hygiene products, things like that. I am a big fan of reusables. So I spend more money up front and then I never buy it again. I'm using the same cloth makeup remover pads I've had for 10 years. I've got, um, you know, um, menstrual cups, reusable sanitary pads, even my kids not the older one now because she's out of them, but they're in cloth nappies. Brilliant I've idea. I've had the same cloth nappies for all. Yeah. So it, A, it's better for the planet. B, it means that I'm not spending sort of five, ten pounds a week, whatever, on nappies and, and stuff like that. So that's one way I get around it. But it is dependent on you being able to buy that stuff up front and it is more expensive. How do I budget? I am so bad at it. I am really good at putting together the sexiest spreadsheet you've ever seen. I'm talking pivot tables, graphs, everything's brilliant. And I break everything down by category and then I save it and I never look at it again. So what works for me instead, because my brain just isn't wired that way. It's, not, it's never going to be wired that way. If it was, it would have clicked in by now, right? What I do instead is I've just got a series of frugal habits that stop me from going overboard whilst not restricting me too much so you know I, I very rarely buy meat unless it's on a yellow sticker um I don't buy snacks and treats for me and Ed anymore time was when we were sort of bougie couple living together we were married for 11 years before we had a kid um you know you'd get the nice olives and the cheese and the nice bottle of wine and you'd have a little picky snack and all of that and we just can't do that anymore so you just don't buy it do you meal plan oh you're frozen I do meal plan, yeah. Again, I'm not the best at sticking to it, but the impetus is there. Um, I generally always have an idea of, of what's happening for the full week, but I'm pretty good at remembering the day before to get something out of the freezer. What are I'm not good at doing is labelling the Tupperware. Are your kids fussy or will they eat anything? 
for the most part, they will eat absolutely anything. The three-year-old did go through a phase about six months ago, suddenly going, ugh, yucky. But what I quickly learned was she wasn't actually not liking the food. She was just watching for the reaction. So it didn't matter what I put in front of her. She was going to tell me it was yucky anyway. And I saw, I started being the nice, gentle parent and being like, okay, here's a choice. What would you like? And then I very quickly turned into my mum and went, oh, that's a shame. You'll be hungry then. And she ate it. Perfect. So do you all eat the same meal? So your husband and your kids and you? Yes, um, I'm celiac and the rest of them are not, but it's really easy to just make everything gluten free. And I'm I'm really old fashioned, right? So I am a stickler for we sit at the dinner table all together. And yes, it's like quarter past five in the evening when we all have dinner, which might not be when I would prefer to eat dinner, but that's fine. That's what we do. All eat together, all eat the same thing. And then poor Ed has it for lunch again the next day. <laughs> Brilliant. So is Ed also a frugal person by nature or or has your frugality rubbed up on, on, on Ed? Absolutely not. He is captain consumer. He's yeah. absolutely terrible. When I went on maternity leave, I was horrified because all of a sudden I found out how many packages were coming to the house. And because when I was working full time, I left the house and came back after he did. I had no idea. But yeah, he, he loves to shop. He's got very little concept of budgeting at all. So I feel like I'm the nag. He's very lucky to have you. And I'm very lucky to have him. But Jesus, he needs to just, you know, he needs to break up with Amazon. <laughs> he does. He's in a relationship with Amazon. Do you have any secret vices when it comes to spending? Something's coming out. Yeah, I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to get that out. Basically, all of these yes. is wool ah, that I will never have time in the next knitter. 10 years. Do you knit or crochet? I'm a crocheter. Ah. Crochet, yeah. So it's, it's wool for yeah. you. For me, I, I can't resist those. Vinted. Oh, I love vinted. Oh dangerous though because you think oh, it's gosh. cheap and then it's not because they add fees on and you pay for the postage and then a one pound item suddenly turns into a six pounds item well have you tried pre-worn it's like pre-worn limited or something like that i can't remember the exact website name but i'll send it to you you can put it in the description and it's like um second-hand clothes bulk things from charity shops and all of that because you're all ordering it off of one website you're not paying multiple shipping things oh, so it's kind of yeah. like vintage but it do you like a car boot flipping love a car boot but even better than the car boot is our local dump our recycling center has a shop where they lift all the stuff that's too good to go in the bin they intercept it before the big things and i've gotten so much stuff like you know the really huge old-fashioned ornate mirrors i've got yeah. one of them in my dining room Four pounds. Bargain. I've got a no, Tiffany lampshade at the bottom of the stairs. They haven't priced it up yet, so he gave it to me for free. What? That's amazing. I love a you, digital car boot, but you, only for clothes, because you can get clothes there for 50p. What about charity shops? How do you feel about charity shops at the moment? I feel like they've gone up in price and you have to really be strategic, a bit like when we go food shopping at different supermarkets, you have to be strategic as to where you go for the better bargains. If I can get something for a pound, a top for a pound or a dress for a pound, I'm happy. If I've got to pay £3.50, sometimes £7, £8, £10, no. How do you feel? Yeah. I, I agree. I think they've become overpriced to the point I think what they're trying to do is put off the people that are buying stuff to then resell it on vintage and whatnot but what they're doing is actually pricing the people who need those inexpensive clothes out of the market it's almost now become cheaper to go and buy something new from Primark um, or from a supermarket or somewhere like that rather than reuse what's already there and I find that really frustrating but I've, I've had a couple of good bargains so I was at a charity shop down south last year and I found um, 
perfect condition, 1980s aqua scoot and trench coat. It was either 25 or 35 pounds in my size. Oh my yeah. God. Amazing. But those, that's few and far between those bargains. So I wear a lot of leopard print. I reckon 90% of my wardrobe is all leopard print. Sometimes I go out full leopard, like there'll be a coat, a top, trousers, shoes, bag, the whole lot. <laughs> I'm known as the leopard print lady them. of Norwich. So if, if you see anything like, which is a bargain around for, that's leopard, I would pay you for it. I'm absolutely insane. Oh, Absolutely, Will. I'll, I'll keep my eyes open. So, so you mentioned snacks earlier. So you and Ed tend not to snack now, but your kids snack on, snack on things. So what do you get for the kids? How do you keep that to a minimum, the spend? So I, I try and be really good about doing things like batch baking, things that will freeze well, like, um, you know, banana muffins with low sugar in. And um, when the, the kiddies were littler, I'd make like little spinach pancake things and freeze them in bulk and I'd do all of that. As I've gotten a bit older and we don't spend as much time in the house, I try and get out the house every single day for as cheap as possible, I might add. Um, so you need stuff that's kind of shelf stable and can go in the bottom of a bag. So it does end up being things like uh, fruit pouches. They are insanely expensive. Um, but also... on. Um, I know there's like a thing on the internet now, there are memes everywhere I look about the fact that the cost of berries is bankrupting parents, but the cost of berries is bankrupting parents. I planted like 20 strawberry plants for this year in the hope of saving our finances. Have you have you seen Insane. any yet? Have any grown? Uh, they're growing. They're, they're growing. They haven't done much yet, but it's still quite cold up here. We had a frost I'm last week. I'm wearing a fleece. When's the sun going to come out? Same. Like 20 degrees next week, apparently. Oh, I hope so. That would be really good. So what are your go-to meals that you and Ed cook sort of time and time again that are just brilliant for the budget? I am a big fan of things like a big vegetarian chilli. Um, things that I cook over and over and over again are it's never the same because I never follow recipes I always just use what I've got to hand so it can be different every time it's the best way of doing it and then you don't get as bored as well um you know your standards like your bolognese I make huge vats of what I call red pasta sauce which is any vegetable that's vaguely orange or red in my fridge falls into a pot with loads of garlic loads of herbs tablespoon of sugar and loads of tin tomatoes, blitz it all up so that no one knows they're eating that much vegetables. <laughs> and then you freeze it in portions and we'll have that once a week. DIY pizzas is always a fun one as well because then everyone can just put what they want on it. Mm, we get yeah. some weird combos. Good idea. Any, any tips on how... What about you? Oh, I, I'm like you. I'm quite creative and I, I enjoy that part of cooking. I actually really like food shopping as well. And for me, the whole budgeting thing yeah. has become almost like gamification, like it's a game. Like, I've got to see how much I can save this week. What can I sell? What can I do? I'll be left with just an empty house and my cat. But I, I really enjoy, like, the thrill of the budget chase. It's really, really strange. But I also really enjoy the creativity of looking through my cupboards and think, right, I'm not spending anything this week. What have I got? Also, another thing I'm conscious of is food waste. So... For example, when I started on this journey, I looked in my spice rack thing. I've probably got about 30 different spices in there, all little ones. God knows how much we'd have spent on them over time. But I'm now trying to eat them up to say, OK, what have I got in there? Oh, I've got a load of harissa. So, right, let's just use that and not buy it again unless I absolutely need it. Because what I used to do was I used to I used to use recipes before I was more frugal and I would go and buy all the ingredients that I needed on that recipe. But it's very wasteful to do that because they, and then you end up with a load of food waste, just spices that haven't seen the light of day. So I like to bung things in, dry things. Sometimes they're a fail and I feel really bad then because I'm on such a small budget. I feel like I've wasted the ingredients. But it's a learning curve, isn't it? Yeah. And it, it's more of a waste for it to sit on the shelf. So if you try something and it doesn't work out, well, well, it's no more wasteful than having not tried it. So one thing I've really stopped buying um, 
one because it's been really cold but two because it goes off really quickly and is expensive is sort of salad stuff so a whole cucumber now is nearly a pound down here which i think is ridiculous for a cucumber um but things like iceberg lettuce little gem lettuce obviously iceberg is the cheapest but i've kind of stopped getting the cucumber the the um lettuce even cabbage i'll just buy things that i know i'll like and use so courgettes i eat a lot of string beans green screen um string beans i love peas so you've got a love affair with red and i've got a love affair with green <laughs> we never have the salad problem in this house because of all the animals so the tortoise and the bearded dragon and the rabbit go through all of that and actually over the summer i grow as much of it as i can because it's so expensive by the time i bought three or four bags of salad a week you know that that's not cheap so what I, else I tend to grow as, as i can but um well in our old house before we had kids i had the whole back garden set up like an allotment and i grew everything that's cool and not only that just to get even more sort of the good life about it i then use half of it to make homebrew and make my own like strawberry wine and things like that so incredible it's it, it's good. and it's it, it is money saving as well but a question for you do you ever struggle then with sometimes in the supermarkets like if I get a big punnet of mushrooms, bad example, because I would just freeze mushrooms, I would struggle to use as many mushrooms as that in the time frame, even with my family of four. So do you find that that's tricky because you can't buy the big value things? Absolutely. So this week, for example, I wanted to get some berries and it was the only fruit that I bought. So I didn't buy apples, pears, bananas or anything like that this week. So I thought, right, I didn't get blueberries. I just thought I'm going to go for strawberries. Strawberries are coming into season. They're a bit better value for money than blueberries. So I went and got the family pack, which was like £3.29. Well, after day two, of course, half of them are mouldy. So <laughs> that's the problem. They go mouldy or, uh, or I leave them too long in the fridge and I haven't eaten them and they go, go off. Ah, you know the obvious solution to that you needed to get some chocolate and dip them in it that's a good idea also i did used to make jam out of it and i've i've realized now that making jam is super easy you don't need pectin and all that stuff really all you need is just to boil it up Ooh. keep boiling till it goes gloopy that's it yeah and then stick it in a mason jar and off we go so i've got a question for you have you got any tips to stick into a budget? Because we all make budgets, but how do you mentally stick to yours? I know you don't look at your spreadsheet much, but you obviously are a good um, thrifty foodie. Um, the biggest single tip for spending less in the shops is not to go in the bloody shops. Just don't do it. Don't yeah. go in. Do your, your sort of rough plan, being adaptable to... Um, what's on offer when you get there but go in and do your weekly food shop or your monthly food shop or whatever and then don't go back now sometimes I go about this in a bit slightly backwards way like I use a milkman and the price of milk from the milkman is higher than it is in the supermarkets but a I've got the convenience factor of it b I'm, I know that through the company I use I'm paying the farmers a fair wage which is important to me as well but the most important thing is if I'm not popping in for a pint of milk I'm not buying everything else that I walk past and go, oh, that looks good. It just saves an absolute fortune. Do you also ever do any online food shopping and then get it delivered? Or have you tried? I, I do occasionally. Um, I prefer to go in and be able to have a look at the yellow stickers, ideally, but sometimes that is a bit tricky. Um, you know, it, you've, you've seen small children having the screaming meltdown of their lives in the supermarket before, I'm sure. I've been there. I've been the mum carrying them out surfboard style. Um, so it, it is easier to go shopping when I'm by myself. Um, so, yeah, I've done the delivery thing, but I don't know. I, I just prefer I like food shopping like you. For me, this is fun. I know. So. It's weird, isn't it? We're strange people, but why not? Why not? So in terms of like your favourite supermarket, if you had to pick one, which one would you pick and why? I can't pick one. Can I pick two? You can pick two. Please. <laughs> and the reason why I say I have to pick two is um, I 
Aldi is my favourite supermarket. It's my favourite shopping experience locally. The staff at our local Aldi are lovely. I like the layout of it. It's always clean and the quality is always really good. Plus, it is the cheapest supermarket that I have found. So Aldi, absolute winner. And also, I like actually that there isn't a thousand and one different choices on the shelves. It's like, if you want this, well, there you go. There is that. You're not going to get 20 million varieties of it. Just pick the damn thing. So there's less le mental fatigue about the whole shopping experience, I think. Um, but I can't buy everything that I need as a celiac in Aldi. They just don't sell it all. So my runner-up would be Sainsbury's because I find that they've just got the better selection in terms of the free-from stuff, but also in terms of like world food, spices, like harissa paste. I'm not sure I'd be able to get that in some of the other local supermarkets. That's a bit exotic for them. So Sainsbury's is definitely the runner-up. What about you? Well, interesting because I saw your late one of your latest videos, which was where you actually went out and tested which supermarket was cheapest for your sort of average weekly shop. And actually, the one that I love the most was one of the most expensive on your thing, which was Asda. I love Asda. I was so blown. I know. Uh, I was kind of the same as Sainsbury's but there was a huge difference I'm gonna have to start having a look at Sainsbury's because in my head I've always thought Sainsbury's is between like Asda and Tesco and then Waitrose so Sainsbury's to me has in my head been premium but I'm gonna look it up plus I keep seeing on Instagram people having a lot of success with the yellow tickets at Sainsbury's and I mean those yellow tickets are few and far between at Morrison's at Tesco the only time I've had success with yellow tickets at Asda was first thing 7am on a Saturday morning but that's not always convenient but Sainsbury's apparently is worth a look yeah Sainsbury's are reasonably good with us what I found with our local Asda is their low uh, their yellow stickers at the moment are not even worth bothering with I'm talking about stuff that goes out um, past its best before that day and it's got nine pence off it what is the point no yeah the sticker probably costs that what's what are you doing and it's just going to be incinerated it drives me insane mm-hmm Absolutely. They lock, they lock all the bins now. I have considered doing dumpster diving, but apparently it is illegal. But I do enjoy watching other people having a good rummage in the bin on YouTube. Yeah, I, I do enjoy that. I, I don't think I'd quite stretch to that far. I do love Too Good To Go, but it's not the same as dumpster diving. I'm not making them equivalent in any way, shape or form. But like some people I know are a bit squeamish about that, going, oh, it's essentially food that's about to expire. Well, yes, I've got it eaten. Plus, it's good fun. Yeah, to go is definitely I've never, I've never done no. one of those, but I want to. I want to have a go. I think it's as long as you pick carefully, because the danger is if you've got something that you don't like, do you have someone that you can give it to very quickly for it to not go to waste? Yeah. Um, I mean, I I have my own monster. He, he's six foot tall. He's called Edward. And he will eat whatever it is that I can't eat in the bag, it's right? Human or he'll take it into work within the show. He is. He is. He's not a fussy man, clearly. So he takes oh. it into work with him or does whatever he needs to do. So nothing goes to waste. But, um, you know, having food allergies, if it was just me, I probably wouldn't be able to use too good to go at all. Which yeah. Would be a and, real shame. and you've got to be careful where you pick as well. Cause I think if you obviously go to like Starbucks then you're going to get, or Greg's, you're going to get a lot of like sugary breaded food. So we've only got 10 minutes yeah. left. And I've got a couple more questions. I want to, I want to fire at you if that's okay. So, um, what are your biggest outgoings? Is it food? Because obviously we're living in a cost of living crisis at the moment. Or is it bills? And how have you got them down? Have you had a look at those as well? Your other expenses? Um, so we are really lucky that we don't have any consumer debt. The only debt that we have is our mortgage on our house. But Legends. we we absolutely stretched ourselves to the limit like this is the forever house I'm never moving I was really lucky that um, I actually bought my first flat when I was 21 living in Glasgow and I bought it just before the 2008 financial crash I think I was the last person in the country to get a 95% mortgage I bought it with the pennies I'd earned working at Argos on my gap year for a, I think it was seven and a half thousand pounds my deposit oh, and I felt yeah. like a millionaire having that over right um but that does not mean that we have reached financial freedom at the age of 36, 37. 
Uh, so our mortgage is, is crippling. And the other biggest cost is childcare. Yes, I've heard. Even it's though my girls are... Yeah, well, well, this is partly why um, I left my career at the end of last year, because it would have cost £2,000 a month to have both girls in nursery. That yeah. is ridiculous. £2,000. And I know the older one now qualifies for some three hours, and that's amazing, but it's not. It's still £1,000 a month for the youngest if they were to be in full-time. And we don't have family here as backup. We're here by ourselves, so... Yeah, th those are the biggest costs. Other than that, we're pretty frugal. You know, we we don't have a lot of subscription things. Um, we go out to eat maybe once a month. And when I'm doing stuff with the girls, like I'm, we go to the library all the time. Free toddler I classes. I love the library. Loads of play group. I'm 41, and I love the library. I discovered it again, like tail end of last year. I got a library card. Wow, it's a mystical, magical place. And there's so many cool clubs and stuff. There's like knitting sessions and craft sessions. There's a 3D printer workshop at one of our local ones where you can go and make whatever you want for free. It's incredible resources. There's so much you can do without spending any money. Um, but other than that, yeah, kids' things are expensive. They are. So my second to last question is you mentioned earlier about going out every day, which I think is really, really good for the soul. How do you keep that cheap? Any ideas for me? What can I do that's free or super cheap that, that I can do outside the house? So um, one of the best things to do is keep, as much as I hate, weirdly, considering what we do, I'm not a fan of social media, but it's worth being on Facebook to join your local community groups because there will always be, always be someone going up going, oh, there's a car boot sale on here. There's an antiques fair on here or there's um, you know, a local phaeton in your park or something like that. If you're someone that likes being outdoorsy, which we do, National Trust properties are amazing um, and generally do decent deals as well. But also, it sounds counterintuitive, memberships to things, although it can be pricey up front, if you know you're gonna use it, can really work out. So there's a, a wildlife nature reserve near us, five pounds for parking, right? Absolutely bonkers, five pounds for parking, and I don't know why you're paying for it because the car park is just a giant pothole and that, it's amazing we get the car out every single time. But we paid for a parking pass, £70. And as long as we went a couple of times a month, in fact, even once a month, you're more than making that money back. Clever. We do, we go every other week. Clever. So, it, yeah, it, doing things like that, as long as you know you're not going to use it, don't use it like a gym membership, buy it and go once and never again. Yeah. Then you're all right. I think that's really, really good. What can I do, Claire? Any ideas? So I love history. I love books. I love wandering around car boot sales, but that is lethal because you do end up spending the odd 50p. Any ideas for me? Selfish question. I think, no, not at all. I think you need to join a, a club or seven. Find a hobby that could be interesting to you that you either had an interest in or... You know, something mad, like join a creative writing group. Yeah. Go do something like that. You will find a local group. And A, it's great because you get to meet people, which is nice, because I find it can be a little tricky to make new friends at sort of this age. <laughs> it's easy when you're younger. And now when you're this age, it's like, oh, how do you actually do that? Um, so you'll meet some really interesting people and they will basically organise your social life for you, is what I found. So I'm into my local politics, which I know is weird niche interests but that's basically become my social circle and it's generally cheap activities it's not stuff I'm paying to do but it's sometimes stuff I'm paid to do but it's you know it keeps you busy it keeps you active it keeps you engaged but you're not having to like pay for it if that makes sense yes maybe like a pottery class I'll keep you posted or a cooking class yeah, I love things like that. I think there's some kind of history group in Norwich called the Norwich Society. It's probably full of really ancient people, but I might be wrong. I might, I'm going to look into it. I'll let you know. It just doesn't matter. I started doing belly dancing classes recently because I've got a really bad back and I wanted to mobilise it a bit. And I am, I swear to goodness, I'm the youngest person there by like 25 years. It is the most fun. The most it's so fun good. You do on two just legs. Do a hundred but we're not always on two legs sometimes it goes wrong <laughs> it's really really good fun. 
And it's not something I ever thought that I would do. And it's just me and all these um, ladies who are that wee bit older than me. And they're there in like jeans and polyester suits and whatever. Yeah. Just being at Laldi with all the dangly belts. Yeah. Good. Oh, God, that sounds really fun. I have a neighbour, actually, a couple of doors down. She's an older lady, but early retired. She does loads of stuff. So I might jump on her bandwagon and say, Jane, right, let's go. She does belly dancing. She does Tai Chi. Well, give it a go and car share. There you go. Save some more money. Yes, exactly. So my final question for you today, it's been lovely, Claire, to have this chat. Any advice to people out there who might be watching this, who are in a little bit of a pickle, any advice on how they can go about starting their frugal journey? Right. Finances are really emotive. And a lot of time there's a lot of shame around them. And, you know, I, as somebody, you know, with anxiety, um, I have an anxiety disorder. I know how frightening it can be to actually look at the numbers and see how bad things are because of the shame that comes along with that crikey we've only got two minutes um right so the, you just need to take a deep breath have a look at it and wrap your head around it and sit with that discomfort as, as horrible as that is because it will pass that is the only way you're going to really make progress and get a plan together and know that there is support out there there are loads of organizations out there that can help um, in terms of both financial advice or if you're in food poverty, there are food banks out there, incredible people volunteering with food banks and agencies like that. You are not alone and these people will not judge you for reaching out. And you're not alone. No, absolutely not. Oh. You know, we're, everybody's rooting for you. Oh, lovely, Claire. Well, it's been so nice to talk to you today. Thank you so much for joining me. And we must stay in touch. Absolutely. It's been lovely. I absolutely adore your channel and give your cat a cuddle from me. Oh, I will. Loads of love, Claire. Mum things. Beautiful lady. Bye.